those of you who are watching us on our live streams this morning will have noticed that uh, John Duggan has scuttled in. How are you? Good. Uh, thanks, Chair uh, Kieran and Owen. How's it all going? Under cover of darkness. What have you got for us? Uh, well, I've got some hurly memorabilia just to kind of whet our appetite for Sunday. And to go with the piece you've written on OffTheBall.com. Yes, I've written a piece about the best six hurley matches I have ever seen. Uh, so it doesn't have to be the greatest game of all time, possibly the best six that I've seen. I'm saying there's at least three clear games in the six, is there? There's only one clear game in really? the six, okay. and it's number five. So oh, you've done them in order? Like, I've done them in descending order. order. Guaranteed, no people are going to argue with you and start coming in with games from the 50s, and you'll be like, no, lads, these are games I've, I've seen. seen. Uh, exactly, I picked yeah. the best team I've ever picked one time. Fellas are coming at me, this fella should be on, that fella should be on. I was like, Jesus. Yeah, well, I haven't seen Nicky Rackard, or I haven't seen Christy Ring, and I'm sorry that I haven't, but I, I don't have a time machine. Um, YouTube exists, John. Yeah, it does. Um, so, uh, so I wrote the article last night and I was thinking about it and I suppose one controversial one that I've left out is Waterford Cork in 2004. I was there, it was an amazing Munster final with John Milan, uh, I loves me county and we Waterford, just a, a brilliant day. But to me, to be one of the best games I've ever seen, it has to have really got something on it and Waterford succumbed in that semi-final and when the business end, uh, comes to the fore, I think you need to perform at the business end. So that was my kind of rationale for, for, for the, the choices I made. Um, so I, I brought some memorabilia in as well uh, this morning, the signed Kilkenny jersey, the four in a row team, bit of Brian, bit of Henry Shefflin on it. Um, and actually signed, because you know some counties now, they get one signed at the start of the year and they print them so that yeah, they don't have to... No, that's legit, yeah. Uh, and in fairness, I understand why, because obviously it's Porrick Walsh. Yeah, so, so this is the team uh, in... 2010, yeah. 10. 10, 10, yeah, I got that signed. Um, Derek Ling was good enough to give it to me. Um, this is quite sad, actually, and, and uh, but I kind of wanted to bring it in because I, I do remember, I think, I think this match should be remembered. Um, the only person who ever gave me a signed hurl, and he, he did it out of the blue when I met him for, for a radio gig, was Tony Keady. Uh, 10 years ago, the Galway legend, 1988 Hurler of the Year, a lovely man, great guy, and certainly I haven't forgotten Tony. So, uh, brilliant Hurler, centre yes. back, Tony Keady, you know. So, nice one to have. I didn't know he made Hurlers as, as well. Yeah, and Oren Moore, yeah. Um, so, yeah, he was a great guy, Tony. Um, some tickets, like the first ever Hurling final I went to was 1991. It was Kilkenny at Tipperary. First week of secondary school, 19 punts it cost to get into the Hogan stand. Is that the Michael Cleary goal? Yeah. Um, best performance I've seen ever. I think it looks like it's from like the 40s or something. <laughs> <laughs> I look at this ticket right now. Can we get a, can we get a, can we get a close up of that ticket? <laughs> There's actually a tip. 1991, there. like, come on. It, it's Mark Foley, the dentist, on, on the picture as well. It's Gary McInerney, isn't it? Yeah, they were using uh, wrenches and hatchets and back then in the Tony dentistry. Keady. And Tony Keady, yeah. Uh, best performance I've ever seen was Henry Shefflin in the 2012 final, the drawn game. I thought he was out of this world. Go again, sorry. Uh, best performance I've ever seen in the hurling final, Henry Shefflin. Uh, 2012, thought he was amazing against Galway, almost ran the show on his own to salvage that draw for Kilkenny, although it was Joe Canning who got the equalising point. And my best ever final was Clare, obviously as a fan, 1995, 26 punts for the ticket, and I look enough to get Dalo to sign the programme a few years ago. Clare against Offaly, 1995, um, so that was, that was that. And then we got some programmes uh, that, are, that are still uh, in reasonably good nick. The 125 year anniversary of the GA, the Kilkenny four in a row, the Hawkeye final of 2014, and then the couple of Clare ones. So the six games in descending order that I picked, uh, Clare off, uh, Cork, sorry, Cork Offaly in the rain in 1999. Um, that was just a game that I thought Offaly is probably the last great performance at Croke Park. Brian Wheelhead was clearing the ball like he had the whole of Ireland depending on him. Uh, but Cork had a really nippy young team and they scored the last five points in, in a row um, in the rain to win. And that's the semi-final, Cork, semi -final. Cork win the final in yeah. a very unexpected fashion. Yeah, against Kilkenny once again in the rain. That was uh, my number six. My number five, Clare Tip in 1997. Sorry, sorry, you're, you're burying the lead. Uh, the first line of John's piece in uh, Cork, 19 points, awfully 16 points in 1999. As a 19-year-old student, I came home from a party at 7 a.m., went to bed and woke up just in time to watch a classic between champions Offaly and Young Guns Cork. So obviously, you know, totes of motion as well. <laughs> Tired of emotion. <laughs> no, this is the greatest game of hurling I've yeah, ever seen. Yeah, I'll tell you what I was doing uh, the night before. I do remember what I was doing, but I can't say it here. I'm off the wall. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> X-rated. <laughs> Number five was... Uh, it's the cock girls up from the country. <laughs> <laughs> Clarence Chip, 1997. For a Clare fan to beat Cork, 
Kilkenny and tipped twice in the one year confirmed to me that we weren't a flash in the pan, that we could beat the um, traditional aristocrats and sack them in their castles, which is what we did uh, with that late Jamesy point and the Dave Fitzgerald save from John Lahey. Uh, it was the last time I really felt unbearable emo uh, nerves as a, as a, as a, as a supporter. Uh, so much so that when the final whistle went, my dad and I, and he's well gone now, there was just this randomer who came up to us. And we, there was just a complete, utter, crazy embrace Swim. with this random stranger. Uh, so it was just utter, un unconfined joy and euphoria. That was a great day. Uh, number four, the game that got me hooked was the 1990 final, Cork and Galway. Uh, on the TV, I was watching down West Cork. Uh, Galway were six points up. They were a great team, the team of you know of, of Cyril Farrell. But Cork just could come out of the nowhere at that time. Joe Cooney's first half performance was one of the greatest things you're ever going to see. I think he'd won seven by half time, yeah. and yeah. all from play. And it was just he was like a sorcerer. And then they just cl completely closed him down in the second half. Yeah, and then John Fitzgibbon scored two goals in about 90 seconds. And that's what Cork could do. Don't know if they have it now, but back then they could just come out of nowhere and win all Ireland. Tomás Mackay was great in that game as well, wasn't he? He was, yeah, and captain. Number three, the four in a row, 2009. What I loved about Kilkenny um, in that era was that even if they didn't play well, even if they were maybe the second best team, which I thought Tipperary were the better team, Tipperary were ahead. PJ Ryan saved about 100 shots. Yeah. Uh, Benny Dunn got sent off. But Kilkenny could always kill you with quick goals in succession. Did it against Limerick in 07, then did it in this game. Whether it was a penalty or not, it wasn't a penalty. Henry Shefflin buried it. 90 seconds later, Cumberford back of the net. That's what Kilkenny were all about for me. That's number three. Number two. Once again, Kilkenny, 2006. Sports legacies have to start somewhere. Um, for Kerry, it was 1975 in Mikko, maybe uh, Kieran. For Man United, it was the early Ferguson double in 1994. Kilkenny, 13 years later, are still um, producing that kind of work rate, hunger and intensity under Cody. Just ask Limerick. The ignition for that for me was 2006, when they ended Cork's three in a row ambitions. Cork have never won an All-Ireland since. And that was a young Jackie Terrell, Tommy Walsh, Henry Shefflin. The defenders... Sorry, the forwards were defenders in that game, and they beat Cork by three points. That's my number two. But my number one, I've got the programme here in mint condition. The Hawkeye final. Has there ever been a greater f final or a match that I've witnessed? No. 54 uh, scores, only nine wides, no wides between the 44th and the 72nd minute. Really? Bubbles O'Dwyer off wow. the scale with a stick work on his points, Richie Hogan the same. And what does it all come down to in, 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 of the GAA? A technological decision where the whole of 82,000 people are looking at a screen <laughs> to decide who's going to win the All Ireland, and then it's just miss, and then we're back for another. They should have shared the All Ireland. It was that, like, you know, confounding. It was, it was days and confused that I was walking out of Croke Park that day. Two trophies. I'm days and confused now. <laughs> Two trophies and a lot of medals a week, all that. Yeah, yeah. We'll do it again. <laughs> all right, John, that's great. All right, guys. Have you got a lot of suggestions from people? Um, I have, actually, yeah. A lot of people giving out about the Waterford uh, Cork in 04, but people talking about, like, Offaly in 94, and that was very exciting, but was the one the best? Uh, I don't know. Um, like, like the, I, I remember doing lists of both the best sports events I'd been to and the best I'd seen on TV, because there's a, there's a significant yeah, difference in yeah. terms of um, atmosphere and environment. Sometimes you're watching your mates, sometimes the you're way just watching you, your own. You your yeah, lines they're all like Cork Park, at every one of those games, and probably bigger, you know, it's probably yeah. mostly have packed houses at them. Yeah. So that shows the, ad, the addition of the That's people, right, the yeah. atmosphere and everything you had to... Anybody here? Yourself, Jerry, you're a big hurling fan? Um, sorry, just, uh, I'll come back to that in one second. I thought that the atmosphere had a massive impact on Kerry's just uh, readiness for the battle last week. It was it was too like a training ground. 33,000 people in mm -hmm. Croker. Because I remembered um, the conversations in between uh, before the Mayo game, how Kerry needed to lay down a marker. I'm sure those conversations were the same, but it's like, well, how do I? Well, am I going to start a fight here? There's no one watching. Yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. Like, even, even though it's probably the same amount of people, but it's 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 perception is everything. And when you're in a place and it's you look around and it's there's people everywhere, it's it's it definitely hypes it up. Um, it exploded when the goal happened, though. Certainly I did. I, did. I, think, I think once. I think, it, I think once there. it got close and the football, you know, both teams, were, you know. We're, we're starting to kind of kick better scores. I think the first half was a lot of freeze and a lot of, you know, Kerry were poor and, and Tyrone weren't exactly scintillating, but they were just kind of edging away all the time. And but I think there were some great scores kicked uh, by both teams in that game. And McShane, in, McShane inside was was brilliant in the first half and he was probably the shining light of the half, to be quite honest with you. Um, but in the second half, you'd, you know, you'd see O'Brien, Ganey, Clifford really come into it and, and kick great scores. Uh, the 1994 All Ireland hurling final, Offaly against Limerick. I was um, I was in the canal end. I think 
I think it was in Kinnan, certainly amongst the Limerick fans anyway, but cheering for Offaly. And um, <laughs> they, were, they were absolutely thrilled with themselves for like, you know, 60, 63, 64 minutes. And you could still get in the pitch in those days. And I remember going down to the pitch and I think it might have been the second year, the first year of the, the Guinness ads and the Guinness music and that was coming over the tannoy. And you're like, wow, this is, I think, mm. I'm going to remember this. Uh, but like th that was just uh, shellacking. It was it was as dominant a uh, short period of time as the Dubs had against um, yeah. Mayo. Yeah. Three yeah, yeah. The, the Billy Dooley time. on the sideline just putting them over. He got it in, the, in his hand and it's over the bar. Momentum. Yeah. John, have you seen a, a bad uh, Tipperary Kilkenny game in recent history? Tip beating Kilkenny the last time. In they 2016. Them. Yeah, it wasn't a great game. It was. It was actually a terrible game, really. There the, the, the one when it was a Lark Corbett and Tommy Walsh. They had the kind of joke about when they were running around after. Yeah, yeah, that was. That was. That was but great. that that has a certain level of fascination. But I greatly enjoyed 2016. I like. I, I just Hammering. find. I just find. Yeah, I find when these two teams go toe to toe, it's just this amazing spectacle and. Like, oh, yes. you, can ne you can never, ever, ever get old of this rivalry, even though it is the most common one we've seen, certainly this century. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. I, I can't really remember that many bad ones, even in 2002 when Tipperary are All-Ireland champions. Like, Kenny like, beat them well, and Brendan Cummins saved a lot of shots in that game, I remember. Yeah, and they, they didn't really meet that much. Uh, I think it was 71 to 91 they didn't meet at all. So, yeah, I don't, think Brian Cody, I don't think Brian Cody as a player ever played against Tip in the championship. That's mad, isn't it? And uh, the tip lads of the current tip team have never played in the final against anybody but Kilkenny. It was one of Aunt Kelly's stats from during the week. Yeah, exactly.